it's they can just make me crazy, right? So we want to talk today about what we talked a little bit about last week with the five basic things that you can do to improve your health. And we talked about sleep, food, um, stress management, um, I think movement a little bit, and uh, detoxification. And I'm gearing up. I'm still gearing up. I know that I said I was going to do the detox, but I'm still gearing up to do it. And in doing so, the way that I have set it up for my own success is to um, start weaning myself off certain things week by week and then move into the more strict eating plan and supplementation plan as I get my body ready to do so. Because if you're eating sugar and drinking, you know, Cokes or Diet Cokes and um, having lots of bread and pasta and dairy and all of that, which is most of what our American diet is, is focused around, then if you go cold turkey, you can come off like a crack addict. And it can be really demoralizing and inhibit our success because we don't feel well when we're doing something that's supposed to be helping us. And so it's kind of a, a against the, your best interest if you do things too fast. When I teach pharmacology, most of what we talk about is to start low and go slow. And that is a good success uh, mantra in medicine, um, especially when you're working with prevention. Now, when you're working with more complex things where you've got a cancer diagnosis or you have an autoimmune diagnosis or you know, you're slotted for a quadruple bypass, then going slow isn't always the best plan because honestly, you may not have the time to go slow. And so um, when I used to meet with my integrative cancer patients, you know, I would say that you know, it's my philosophy to hit this as hard as possible in every way that we can so that we have the best success. And when I did that, I often worked with people who were going through radiation and chemotherapy at the same time. And the therapies that I did helped to lessen the side effects of those things and also increase quality of life, which it's very successful at. But that's a topic for, for later on if we if we want to get there. Detoxification of toxicants, and it's not toxins. Toxins are things that are made by bacteria or your own metabolism. Toxicants are the chemicals that we are exposed to that don't belong in the human body that come from industry and the environment, food, etc. And that's what we really want to move through. And some of them get stuck in the fat, some of them get stuck in bones and neurological tissue like heavy metals. And heavy metal detox is something very, very different from what I'm talking about with a detoxification program that we run through Naturopathic MD, which you can get. It's uh, $600 for 30 days and you get protein and detoxification powders. If you follow on Instagram, you saw that I got mine in chocolate and vanilla. And next week we'll talk about recipes for that and uh, make easy, easy ways that you can basically have a milkshake for breakfast and dinner and um, lose weight, detoxify, et cetera. But there are supplements that go along with that. Now it's kind of like slim fast, but it isn't based on dairy, wheat, corn syrup, and bad vitamins. It's, um, it's like slim fast on super steroids for a good, for in a good way. Now with this detoxification, what you're going to be mobilizing out of your body primarily are things like fumes from paints, um, carpet, gasoline. If you get regular um, Manny Petties, which you know, is one of my secret pleasures, right? You're getting exposed to a formaldehyde and toluene and a lot of nasty chemicals. And you can see, you know, people that are exposed all the time that work in the nail salons, often they'll wear um, masks. However, the masks that they wear are more for like surgical, you know, they're medical masks, but they're not getting out those volatile organic compounds. So when I go, if I'm feeling saucy, I'll wear my Darth Vader mask, which has the two filters that are specifically to like catch those fumes um, 
or that's what I did when I was getting ready to be pregnant. Now I'm like, well, just detox and, you know, it'll all be good, which is kind of the philosophy of this, you know, website and this podcast is what can you do so that you can live a sane life where you don't have to be perfect and decrease your likelihood of getting disease from it? Because we live in a very toxic, stressful, inflammatory environment. And those are the three big drivers of chronic disease. And so what, like, how are you able to eat, you know, something that you love that you know isn't necessarily great for you without having the negative side effects. And that's really what we teach people, how to walk that line and also how to be in touch with their bodies so that they're not doing it without being conscious. Because honestly, we really ignore our bodies most of the time. So with this detoxification process, it's going to be helping the liver and the kidneys and the skin and your lymphatic system, your adrenal system, um, move a lot of these toxins out. And I've talked before about how, you know, foot baths and chlorella drinks and, um, you know, the master cleanse, they have benefits. Foot baths, maybe not. They're relaxing. But they're not really allowing the body to mobilize things. Because for example, if you do the master cleanse, you're not giving your body the nutrients needed for your liver to detoxify those chemicals that you're mobilizing. So you're just mobilizing them and they're going other places. And you can have symptoms from that that can make you not feel so well when you go through that process. And so that's why the detoxification that I've designed has all of the, Uh, excuse me, all of the nutritional support needed for your liver and your kidneys to be able to really get that stuff out so that you don't hold on to it or just give it another place to live. And so in this process, I've been taking out grains, which we talked about last time, are, it's one of the best ways that you can lose weight, lower inflammation. You don't need those carbohydrates. You don't, unless you're running marathons or doing extreme energetic activities, you don't need a lot of carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates you could be using can certainly come from fruits, vegetables, and things like sweet potatoes. Bodybuilders love sweet potatoes because they have good carbohydrates, but they're also coupled with beta carotene and vitamin A and fiber and other things that are beneficial for the body, not just a shot of of carbs. And I was thinking last night about... um, what I was feeding myself in this process, I've tried to be very uh, present and conscious through this as far as what I want my body to be made out of. So if you eat bread and, it, and it's kind of easy or simplify it into the colors. And I'm not talking about artificial colors because that's a whole other ball game. But if you think about the colors that you're going to make your body out of, because if you are what you eat and you eat a lot of bread, what color is that? Well, usually it's like a white-ish, yellow-ish, tan-ish thing. And it's largely carbohydrates that get broken down into simple sugars. Well, in your body, most of what is whitey, yellow, tan is fat. And so do you want to have deposition of fat in your body? Most of the time not. And so when you eat things like green leafy vegetables and brightly colored berries, those bioflavonoids go to areas of your body that use those colors to make them healthier and stronger. So do you wanna be made out of healthy fats that are helpful for your immune system and your nervous system and every cell in your body basically? Or do you wanna be made out of trans fats like what's found in, fats that are cooked too high, French fries, et cetera. Now, French fries are delicious, but there's something to be eaten every now and then when you hit your health goals. So that's like detoxification eating. Now, since I'm you know, being so present and have decided to pay attention to my own body for once, right? Because through our 20s and 30s, often most of us feel like superheroes and You know, we can drink all night, wake up without a hangover, go to work at seven o'clock in the morning and feel just fine. And yet as you get older, 
you know, it's not just about alcohol and hangovers, but as you get older, you start to feel your body repair less, have less resiliency. And now, as I've said previously, like the millennial generation behind me, some of the sickest people I've seen in practice have come from that generation. And I think it's because so many of them grew up in a more toxic environment with more, you know, Lunchables and um, high fructose corn syrup and soda in in the you know school lunch cafeterias, etc. Um, plus, you know, just the stress. Um, I didn't have an email address until I hit college, and now we have kids that spend lots of time on um, Instagram and Facebook, and the media is poison because you know studies have shown that the more time you spend on social media, the more likely you are to, to be be depressed and have lower self-confidence um, because you're constantly comparing. And comparison isn't necessarily a bad thing when it's used in a positive way. But if you compare yourself and feel negative about someone who's been photoshopped or um, a story about people that can buy $15,000 handbags when you're struggling to buy organic food for your kids, that can be demoralizing. And so the more that you can disconnect from that and get in touch with yourself in a way that's present and um, yet you wanna be discerning not necessarily judgmental. You want to be discerning. And discerning is not saying, well, I don't eat as well as I should. And therefore, I'm a bad person is judgmental. Discerning is, well, I see. I've looked in the mirror. I don't eat as well as I could. We don't want to should all over ourselves, do we? So you don't eat as well as you could. What are you going to do about it? What is a positive change that you can make? And um, that's what we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. But let's talk first about being present. Um, as long as you're not driving or operating heavy machinery while you're listening to this, I'd like you for a moment, we talked last time about posture, right? So if you're seated or if you're standing, it's a similar thing. So I want you to just feel how your feet are touching the ground. Are they even? Do you have weight evenly distributed? You know, look at your, at your legs. Are they, you know, is one shorter than the other? Is one um, less muscular than the other? Do you have injuries? How are your hips sitting in the chair or how are they um, distributing weight if you're standing up? How do you walk? What is your gait if you're moving? You know, are your abs sticking out? Or are they engaged in holding your posture? You don't need to do, you know, the ab roller and planks and all of that if you just pay attention most of the time to how your posture is. Are your shoulders back? Are you actually taking deep breaths? How about your neck? Is it forward? Look down, looking at your phone? Or is it set back? I um, was in physical therapy a couple of years ago and um, physical therapist gave me some exercises. There's a whole book on how to um, heal your body with, with posture and, and movement. I mean, that's physical therapy is about how to strengthen things that are weak so that your body has proper mechanics. So shoulders down and back, and then tuck in your chin and lift the back of your head. That's good posture. And then turn from one side to the other. How far can you go? Do you have pain? You know, is it equal? I just heard a couple of pops. My neck is my weak spot or one of them. And so that's kind of like a physical assessment. Now think you've gone through all of that. Do you have pain? Where do you have pain? Is it in your feet? Is it because you're wearing gorgeous shoes that are awful for your body? I gave that up for the most part. <laughs> I hit a certain age. I was like, oh, this is true. I used to run through the airport in, you know, $12 three inch stilettos, no problem. And now not so much. That'd probably kill me. So our bodies change over time. I had a acquaintance tell me that he felt like a fuse had been lit. He's 42. 
he had felt like a fuse had been lit and it was just burning down until the end of his life. Now, do you feel like that was a positive statement? I mean, it's how he's feeling, but how about your aging? Let's do it as gracefully as possible and slow it as well as we can so that we have quality of life. Because really, what do you have? When it all comes down to it, what do you have? You have this body. How well do you want to take care of it? And what is it worth to you? So let's take, for example, a um, $600 detoxification for a month that helps decrease your bodily load of toxins that are proven to cause cancer, neurological problems, autoimmunity, you, know, you name it, GI issues, because the detoxification process really helps heal up um, problems with your digestion because it gives it a rest from the things that are most likely to bother it. And then we heal it up after. So what are these things that you value in your life and how much do you really value your body? Because most of us take it for granted. And then what's it worth? I want you to think to yourself, how much do you pay for cable or internet wireless? You know, how much was your cell phone? These new iPhones that come out that, you know, you could almost buy a car for, um, or Apple watches or shoes or, you know, your car payment. I'm about to trade in my car because it doesn't sing to my soul. And I'm going to get one that does. And I'm probably going to lower my payment when I do it. Um, so those are little things that you can change. I mean, what do you like to do in your life and what's holding you back from it is another really good question. So let's do an inventory of your body. What hurts? What doesn't feel well? Do your joints hurt? Do you have arthritis? Well, that's something that we can help and we can change. Um, even with old injuries, believe me, I'm held together by like rubber bands and super glue and prolotherapy and stem cells and yoga and acupuncture and all of those things, massage, right? So whereas I can have x-rays and MRIs that show that I should barely be able to um, walk, that's not the case because I do the things that are necessary to keep my body able to do the things that I love to do. So what is that process? What are these things that are bothering you? Make a list. First of all, list off. What have you been diagnosed with? Most of us carry diagnoses. And so what have you been diagnosed with? List that. And, you know, I don't really believe in a lot of diagnoses. I think that you know, when you get diagnosed with an infection, that's one thing, but most other stuff are their trash can diagnoses, which means, well, we thought you had, you know, we ruled out that you don't have an infection and you don't have, you know, um, gross vitamin deficiencies. And um, so your cluster of symptoms fit this and fibromyalgia is classic as far as this goes, because it's like, if you have these symptoms, because there's no test for it, as well as depression, right? So if you have these symptoms, then you have this, and then they put you in a box of your diagnosis. And then there's an algorithm that not only goes with the algorithm of how to diagnose something, but then there's an algorithm of how to treat it. And so what's the first line medication and the second line medication when that doesn't work or it wears off? And then what's the third line um medication. And then once you get past two, you have no idea what the side effects are going to be because it's such a complex chaotic system and everybody's a little bit different. And now some people will say, well, you know, you do a biopsy, then you have cancer or you do, you know, certain um, autoimmune markers and you have autoimmunity and you have this specific one. And there's value to that. But why? Why has the body all of a sudden exposed this disease to you. So where do you not feel well? Is it in your guts? Is it in your chest? You know, is it in your, in your feelings, in your emotions? And by figuring that out, write that down as well. 
where don't you feel well? And then look at that list. And you can also make a medication list as well. Like what are you currently taking? You know, supplements as well as pharmaceuticals. And then look at that. And how do you feel about that? Really? How do you feel? And how do you feel knowing that if you don't make changes in your life style, that's all going to get worse? It's a little Debbie Downer, right? But if you do something, it will get better. But it's not going to be more medications because the only medications that really treat the cause are antibiotics and antivirals antiparasitics, right? When you're killing something off, but they have their own whole range of negative side effects that can happen. And so if you're treating the cause, you have to find it. And so why doesn't your digestion feel well? Why don't you feel well in your stomach? Is it because you're so stressed out that you've shut down your parasympathetic system and your guts aren't digesting as well as they should because you have an imbalance between fight or flight and rest or digest? Possibly. Um, could you have an imbalance of your microbiome? Probably, most people do. I did have one sample come back where someone had almost perfect poop. It was great. <laughs> I was able to send him an email saying that. And he's like, well, good. At least one thing's going well. Um, actually, he had really good results because he was headed towards a hyperthyroid and they were going to ablate his thyroid. He did this detoxification process with me um, and his symptoms almost entirely resolved. There's still a couple of things that are there, but as far as all of that autoimmune hypothyroid, hyperthyroid um, cluster of symptoms where he was sweating and he was anxious and he had you know, improper heartbeats and fast heartbeats, they're gone. They're gone because we treated the cause. He worked in um, dry cleaning and industrial uh, cleaning and so he was exposed to a lot of chemicals and we took a lot of those chemicals out of him and his body was able to reset because we removed the cause of the disease or the obstacle to what the body couldn't overcome because all that crap was in the way. And he feels great um, and he has perfect poop. So things are, things are going well for him. So why or are we eating the wrong foods? Are we eating foods that upset our stomach? And really, if you pay attention when you eat to how you feel after you do it, you get just as much or more information than some, well, most of the IgG, Ig, E, IgA, not necessarily E, but the Ig immunoglobulin tests that you can do for food sensitivities. You might as well just do an elimination diet and then reintroduce them because you know they're probably the least reliable out there and unfortunately they're the ones that are run most often so do you have pain in your shoulders or your um are you complaining of carpal tunnel pain in your hands um what's going on with your body and then how motivated are you to change it because there's tons of stuff that you can do. And we talked a little bit about that last time because we were talking about basic hygiene and health hygiene anyway, as far as wanting to eat clean, sleep, move, have good state of mind and stress management and removing you know, toxicity. And so once you get this read on your body, really think about how motivated you are to change. And look at that list or think about that list and think about what you want to spend the next 20, 30, 50 years of your life doing. And does your health support that? And some people out there are really, really healthy. And that's freaking fantastic. And they're able to do the things that they love. Um, I had a client that was talking to me about how much he wished he could do the things that he loved. And he couldn't because he didn't have time. 
And I love the, uh, the saying that if you, if you don't have time, then it's not a priority. And that's double-edged though, because we do have a priority for the things that we, you know, feel like we are fear driven to do, right? So you have to go to work so that you can pay the bills. You have to eat so that, you know, you can continue to fuel your body. And then what else is there, right? And reorganizing your priorities is life changing if you do it from a place where you really want to know what you do. And I think that that's one of the big questions is what do you really want to do? I'm still trying to figure that out as far as what do you really want to do and what do you really love? What do you enjoy? And by figuring that out, you're going to have a much better life. Maybe not immediately because it can stir shit up. You might get hit by a thunderbolt or two of things coming out of nowhere where you didn't expect something to shift. But in the end, it'll move forward and it'll be good if you can just let things go. Um, I think Frozen, the Disney movie, might be one of the worst Disney movies made of all time. And um, I know that some people out there disagree with me, but the only redeeming factor of that whole movie, I think, is the song, Let It Go. Even though when it came on the radio, I would change it. But the point is, let go what don't, no longer serves you. Let go what makes you sick. Let go of what makes you feel icky inside. Let go of anything in your house that you look at and you have a bad memory or a bad feeling about. And that includes spouses, <laughs> maybe not bad memories. No one's clear of that. But if you don't feel well, your body is going to react and reflect that. So we're gonna take a quick break to hear from our sponsors and you'll be able to learn more about Naturopathic MD and how to find it. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. Do you remember the last time you felt healthy and energetic? What would you do if you could regain your health and feel good again? Enjoy spending time with your family? Take a trip. Get back to being active and doing the things that you love. Naturopathic MD can help because we practice natural, functional, logical medicine. Have you ever cut yourself and taken a prescription to stop the bleeding, but the cut stayed open? No, because your body can heal itself. Cuts are usually easy to heal, but chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and digestive problems need the expert support we can provide. Are you ready to take action and get your life back? Sign up for one of our elite concierge programs today. Hello, everyone, and we're back to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well with Dr. Heather Dowen. And you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Naturopathic MD. Um, you can get good information as far as seeing how we live our lives. Yesterday, I think I put something up about how I stay hydrated because I don't really like the taste of water. And um, then we'll do smoothie recipes and also, you know, how, how to live so that you can be a little bit bad and still not have it reflect on your health as much. So just all depends on how much moderation you really practice. And that brings me to something about state of mind. And that's why we talked so much about state of mind this morning and actually having, you know, paying attention to how your body is working and paying attention to how you feel. And as far as those priorities, there are things that you can love to do but if you don't feel like doing them, that's, a, that's often a sign of depression. And if you're depressed or anxious or not feeling well in your headspace, then it makes life harder from just about every direction. And most people at that point choose to zone out and watch TV or go on social media 
or do something that makes them not have to pay attention to how they're actually feeling. And that is a really dangerous way to go through life because you wake up and where has your life gone? And if we only get one, don't you want to make it a good one? Like no one ever said on their deathbed, boy, I wish I'd worked more. Really, right? What do you, <laughs> what do you want to be able to look back on when you're dying and think, I'm really, really happy about that. That was the life I wanted to live. What's the life you want to live? What do you want to do? And then how can you do it even though your body has these symptoms and these diagnoses and these medications? Well, you can make a choice and change or not. It's completely up to you, but we want to give you the tools in order to make the best decision for yourself. And if you're depressed and you're negative and you're critical of yourself and you're judgmental and you're just not going through life feeling well, or you're going through life with an addiction covering up all of that, then we can help with that too. But the impetus has to come from you. I can dance on a table with a whip and a dominatrix outfit and I'm not gonna get you to change unless you really want to. Um, so do you really want to? And it's up to you. And if you want to, well then you can contact Naturopathic MD and we can get you started to move forward. And hopefully as you listen to this, you can start little things in your life that are going to make big changes and big differences. So let's talk about sleep. Um, if you don't sleep, everything goes wrong. My youngest brother, I don't know if you remember, I shared he was very ill this last fall. And it stemmed from, even though he was eating really well, he was, um, he, I'm having a mama moment. I need to take another break. All right, save. For the last time you felt healthy and energetic, what would you do if you could regain your health and feel good again? Enjoy spending time with your family? Take a trip. Get back to being active and doing the things that you love. Naturopathic MD can help because we practice natural, functional, logical medicine. Have you ever cut yourself and taken a prescription to stop the bleeding, but the cut stayed open? No, because your body can heal itself. Cuts are usually easy to heal, but chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and digestive problems need the expert support we can provide. Are you ready to take action and get your life back? Sign up for one of our elite concierge programs today. Whew, had a mama moment. I needed to kiss something and make it better. That's what I went to medical school for. <laughs> it's remarkably effective. Think about it, you know, but that's all mind. And so that's why we were talking about how to, to get your mind ready for something and hopeful about something. You know, without hope, you can't live. They did a study a couple of years ago, many years ago now, where they had two cages of rats. You got to love research scientists. And one cage of rats got shocked when they did specific behaviors. The other cage of rats got shocked randomly, just randomly, no rhyme or reason. So there was no hope and they died much, much faster. So hopefully through this process of teaching you on how to make changes and giving you options, um, we can give you hope. Now, if you think that the conventional medical system is the be all end all, you feel great, everything's fantastic, take a pill for the rest of your life and you're good, great. And I hope it works. But if you don't necessarily feel that way, then that's why we're here at Naturopathic MD and the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. So let's talk about sleep. If you don't sleep, you don't repair. You can't lose weight you're more likely to be depressed and anxious. You're more likely to have pain. You are going to have 
obviously fatigue. And sleep means you don't wake up. You close your eyes, you dream a couple cycles, and then you wake up feeling recharged and ready to yahoo hit the day. Now, if you sleep like that, awesome. You don't need to listen about the next sections. If you don't, don't worry, because sleep is something that we are, we need it so much that we can bring it into range pretty easily as far as how to reset it. At naturopathicmd.com, we have three different levels of sleep support packets that you can um, contact us and ask us about. Um, there's herbal support, um, hormonal support as well, depending on whether you're a man, you're a woman, what life um, events you have going on, why you can't sleep. And so we can do um, things to tailor those packets specifically for you and get you good sleep. And the good thing about those is that you don't have to take them for the rest of your life because they're actually addressing the cause of why you can't sleep. Now, if I, I don't know if you heard the mama mama, but if I run my kid at the park, guess what? He takes a nap. And a lot of kids his age don't take a nap. And I just run him and run him and get him that exercise. And I would bet that 95 plus percent of the people listening to this podcast right now are not in good physical shape. And I'm not at my best physical shape either. And that's something that I'm aiming to rectify myself and finding that inner motivation in order to do that, even though I know it's the most important thing for me. I am speaking like an expert on this topic because I don't necessarily take the best care of myself either. And whereas I'm not overweight and I do have some muscle tone and I'm fairly strong, there are definite deficits as far as my fitness go. And the two major things you can do to improve your health long, long term are sleep and have muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have on your body at the time of a cancer diagnosis, the more likely you are to survive it. Exercise is good for basically everything under the sun, except for a few um, eating disorders that are based in over exercise, which is something very different. But we need to start slow, right? You can't just sign up for a gym and say you're going to go all the time and then you know, that's going to be setting yourself up for failure. And so yesterday, while I was doing some of my appointments over the phone, I was doing squats, slow, easy, controlled, also doing calf raises because I'm concentrating largely on my lower body at this point, trying to get grounded in. And from there, everything gets shifted because when you're strong in what you're connected to the ground with, then there's, like any chiropractor would say, right? You've got to have a good base or ar architect or engineer, have a good base and everything from there can improve. Um, one of the things that I've been doing for my feet, especially is I have one of these little yoga balls. I was exposed to them last year and this one's squishy. I like this one because it's a little bit squishy and I roll that on the bottom of my feet in the morning and before I go to bed and I'm probably going to do it right now too because if you're familiar with reflexology there's um, meridians and a homunculus in the foot that is associated with different organs and by rolling them you're waking up those nerves and those meridians and you're also just opening up the muscles of your feet so that you can have good posture. There's a whole barefoot running movement or barefoot working out, minimalist shoes, because a lot of the shoes that we wear are basically torture devices that are terrible for body mechanics. The um, Pediatric Association released, I think it was last year or the year before, time flies, that children really shouldn't wear shoes or you know, shoes with thick soles until they're five so that they have proper setup of their feet. And that's amazing. You think about how many of us when we have foot pain, I had tendonitis in my feet years ago and I was told to go out and get really thick, like new running shoes. And now I wouldn't ever do that again because you have to strengthen what's weak, not you know, make it weaker. 
like those neck braces, right? Or those foam neck braces after you have a car accident. That's good for a short period of time to minimize mobility so that you don't hurt yourself worse. But long-term, that just makes you weak. And I'm all about how to make you strong. And so by walking around barefoot and paying attention to how your weight is distributed and moving, that's going to help you sleep better. And even if it's just squats before you go to bed, that upregulates your growth hormone and helps you get better, deeper sleep. Another thing that you can do, I talked about that protein detox powder a little bit earlier. It's great to have protein right before you go to bed because it can stabilize your blood sugar. Most Americans have blood sugar problems. It's like 60% of Americans are um, adults are insulin resistant leading to diabetes. And uh, we also have the most overweight population in the world and that's all blood sugar. And so if you're waking up a couple of times a night to urinate, it doesn't really have anything to do with how much water you're drinking. It has to do with your blood sugar. And so if you have some protein before you go to bed, like one of those little protein shakes, just a little bit, a couple swallows after your evening smoothie during your detox, or, um, you know, have a piece of lean protein before you go to bed, hard boiled egg, et cetera, then that can stabilize your blood sugar and get you better sleep. The other piece is exercise. And we talked about not having artificial light from the um, from iPads and phones and computers and televisions because it tricks your brain into thinking it's a day. There's probably a trillion meditations on YouTube for sleep. And I recommend using them. <clears throat> They're a great resource. They're free and Getting your mind to calm down before you go to sleep with breathing exercises is another great tool that you can have. So I hope that you are feeling a little bit more empowered about things that you can do, basic stuff that you don't necessarily have to pay for. Um, stretching, walking. I've made a couple of recommendations recently because people are so stressed out. And I have a client on the East Coast and a client on the West Coast. And I told both of them to leave their phones at home and walk on the beach. And that was their exercise. Walk on the beach. Now, if you don't have a beach, walk around the block. If, you know, you live in the frozen white tundra where I grew up, um, you can still walk outside, dress appropriately. Your connection with outside is a really important piece of your health because, you know, we, <laughs> we are animals and you know, we're mammals. I think that's a song. I won't finish the lyrics. So that walk gets you moving, gets you breathing and helps you disconnect. And as you walk, you can work through a lot of issues that you have you know, fears about or can't find solutions to. And I just invite you to be present because you, worries are stealing our lives. And if you have health worries, you know, that's legit. So you, know, you can get help for that. And that's what I do. I communicated with a patient this morning, I saw a um, pathology report that she sent me and she had a biopsy done in September. She had a pap smear. And, you know, there's, we talk about conventional medicine and their diagnostics and their diagnostics are really great in a lot of ways. And, you know, rec regular checkups are an important thing to do, especially with screening tests. Um, some of them I'm not a huge fan of, but I won't get off topic there, but the pap smear is a really important one to get because cervical cancer is a danger and it's caused by certain strains of the HPV virus. And there's a vaccine out there and I won't get on that topic either, but yeah, we'll just skip that. So the HPV, you can still get cervical cancer even if you've gotten the vaccine. So. She had a diagnosis of um, carcinoma in situ, 
and she was scheduled to have a cone biopsy to get it taken out and for the stage to see how much it had progressed. From October to January, I created a program for her that her path report that I saw this morning had no evidence of carcinoma in situ. She had inflammation, she still had some abnormal cells, but we were definitely moving in a positive direction, which is something that is not really expected in medicine. And she shared with me that she was so happy that she had this option and she wished that she could tell everybody about it. Obviously it's a, it's a um, sensitive issue. And every patient that I have had that has had cervical dysplasia that feels so emotionally awful, right? I mean, if you've had that diagnosis or if you feel you know, it feels emotionally awful, which short circuits your immune system right there and you don't necessarily have hope, it's a very scary thing. And one of the things she shared with me was that she had hope because I explained things to her and, and because I have time to do so. And I gave her tools with which to overcome this because she's young, she wants to have kids, she was scared. And um, I'm very confident that she doesn't have to necessarily worry about that anymore. It's something that we need to keep up on, obviously, right? Because when your health shows you its colors as far as what you're likely to have happen or you know, what you're predisposed to, you pay attention to that because that means that's where we, you're weak and that's where we need to work to make you strong. And so I gave her vitamin A and folic acid, certain suppositories, immune support, made sure that her systems were firing correctly. And we're also waiting to get a really great test back for her, which is the nutrition genome. And I've ordered this on just about every patient that I have. And I'll share the link on Facebook, um, my Facebook page, Naturopathic MD and the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well, as well as the contact talk talk network. So we want to see where your genes aren't quite working optimally and be able to support that with food and nutrition. It's probably my favorite test out there. And when we thought about earlier, you know, what's it worth to you? What's your health worth to you? Is it worth buying organic? Is it worth, um, going to bed at 10 o'clock at night and skipping a Netflix binge? Is it worth um, taking a walk and taking time to yourself? Is it worth buying yourself good high quality supplementation? Or you know, what is it worth to you? And that test I think is about $300 and you can get great information on how to eat better to support your genes so you're less likely to express disease. And then you can always contact us and we can help you um, get some supplementation in there and explain it to you a little bit better. But the nutrition genome is just, it's badass. So that was one really good win that I had this week. And I expect because she's so young and because she wants to have kids, we're going to do, you know, like toxicant exposure analysis and detoxify her, but also help support her genes so that she's less likely to expose these hormonal problems and um, immune problems. And that's something that you can do proactive with that information that lasts a lifetime. It's not something that changes a whole lot. Your genes don't really change. I mean, epigenetically, you can have things turned on and off. Um, and that's, it's, the good ones are turned on by uh, what we talked about last week with that health hygiene, exercise, good food, sleep, stress management, etc. So another really interesting thing that I want to work through today is I had a patient who's got a really complex issue going on. She's younger as well. And um, she has got a lot of hormone imbalances. And then we found that based on ways that she reacted abnormally to different therapies that we'd done, or she didn't react as well, uh, it looks like she's got hyperhistaminemia, which means she's got too much histamine in her body. She's too inflamed and she gets swelling and anxiety. And you think about what happens when you take an antihistamine like Benadryl? 
your swelling goes down. Like if you get bit or, you know, if your sinuses are bothering you, the swelling goes down so you can breathe and you get drowsy because histamine is an irritating or arousing neurotransmitter. And so that can lead to anxiety. And it's one of the things that the ALCAT food sensitivity test tests that I love because it is a, it looks at histamine and how um, foods can increase the histamine response in your body. But there's also foods that contain higher amounts of histamine themselves. Um, and you can look up, you know, low histamine foods or low histamine diet if you want to. But I have a couple of things that I want to share as far as what you can put in your smoothies or your drinks um, so that, or just eat more of, so that you can get good amounts of vitamin C, which is one of the best ways to stabilize histamine. And vitamin C is a great antioxidant. It's anti-cancer. It helps with fatigue. It's good for the um, integrity of your tissues and your collagen. So it's anti-aging and it helps keep your wrinkles away, but it also helps with um, protecting you from hypertension and bad effects of diabetes, et cetera. And I shared my, my uh, drink yesterday with the vitamin C powder. It's like a lemonade. And I used this one, that, which is non-acidic. And so you can find this and you can also contact us if you want to order some good high quality vitamin C powder. That one's non-acidic. And I actually didn't like it as much as I usually like my, my lemonade because I'm a sweet tart kind of person. And so this is the other ascorbic acid that I use. And remember, vitamin C is ascorbic acid. That's its chemical name. You know, vitamin C does have a bunch of bioflavonoids that come along with it, which is why having um, lemon and citrus or other fruits that contain vitamin C with like the industrial pharmaceutical vitamin C is nice because they really react very well. And a lot of vitamin supplements like you'll see have vitamin C plus bioflavonoids because they all work together synergistically. This one is just vitamin C, but I add in the bioflavonoids from actual food, which is nice, I think, because it helps with the way it's integrated. And I like that one because it's tart. And um, I take about, I take quite a bit of it, but I've also trained my body to be able to, to handle that. Um, so the food that has the highest amount of vitamin C in it is Kamu Kamu. This is the, um, it's a powder of, I think it's a South American berry and um, vitamin C is, is stable to about 92 degrees Celsius, 94 degrees Celsius. So you don't want to get it too hot. The other is goji berries, which are great. And you can buy these on Amazon. I have links to all of these things on my Amazon page and um, for our listing. So to get more vitamin C, lemons, citrus, um, cherries, kamu kamu, goji berries, they can help with histamine and anti-aging. All right, so this has been the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can follow us on um, Instagram at Naturopathic MD, as well as Twitter, and look for our Facebook page so that you can keep apprised of what we're doing. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Bad